What goes up, I guess, creeps down? Greyport is built on the top of an ancient undercity, parts of which are deserted and parts of which are quite lovely, occupied and have a complex culture of all their own. Fiona and Gurky, who once lived in the undercity, know that several basements in Greyport have connecting passageways and stairwells which allow the fork from the surface to journey down into the undercity and vice versa. Thanks to the incursion of these awful rock-eating slimes, one more building in Greyport now has a basement with undercity access. Freshly equipped, your dauntless band of adventurers drives the hideous oozes out of the cellar of the Red Dragon Inn and back down the sinuous, slimy tunnel that the creatures have bored into the rock. You light your torches, or if you're a classy, a collegium-trained wizard who can't be bothered with such common lighting implements, cast a light spell, and make your way down the ale-soaked incline into the depths below. Your lights do a fair job of illuminating the area. The cramped space smells of wet earth and ale as the broken barrels continue belching out their contents onto the sloped floor. It looks like there may have been tunnels and passages down here that have since fallen in due to who knows what. However, it looks like the most recent cave-in is on the far side of the room. The wall appears to be made from loose rubble. A good whack would probably blow a hole in the wall big enough for even Gog to squeeze through. Hello everyone and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. This is Colin and yes, we're starting Scenario 2 of Tales from the Red Dragon Inn. I had a ton of people saying they were interested in seeing more and I love this game. So, without a doubt, going to play at least a couple more scenarios. This time we're going to play with two new, new heroes. We've got Deidre and we have Fiona. My wife's favorite is Fiona actually, so I'm excited to show her. And Deidre is a really cool elf healer and can do some uh, a little burst damage as well. So excited to show you how they work. We've set up the board based upon the chart for the legendary mode. So we have five slimes out and two gizmoblins. We start in one of these five sections. There are some more difficult terrain spots. There's also some acid pools. You can see them here. They're red. You can move through those and enemies can, no problem. But if at the end of the round you're in that space, you're going to take some damage. So be careful of that. In this scenario, unlike those doors that opened up based upon the scenario itself, we have gravel walls that we have to deal at least one damage to. Here we have the Gizmoblin. This time they only have four health and they have the keyword Berserk, which says this figure treats all other figures as though they were foes, including other schemers of this figure's type. So if they're adjacent to a slime, they'll attack the slime, which is cool. You can see here, we'll roll the die and see how they're going to activate. Okay, that is the lower one. It's going to move two towards the closest foe which could be a slime and then attack three one figure for one damage the gizmoblins will be pretty easy to take out only four health and they're going to be almost helping us so long as we can get them adjacent to slimes right and attack them slimes though ugh, not as much first of all they're immune to acid and immune to traps this means these figures are unaffected by the acid pools and treat them as though they were safe spaces and they don't trigger traps so they can actually walk through them no problem. So I'm not going to be able to push or shove them into traps. Uh, let's see, they're going to activate Slurp Pop, move forward towards a foe and it will attack to all foes. Now something to note about this, when it says move forward towards a foe, it's not going to think smartly. Later on in further scenarios, there'll be a way where enemies will think to try and target as many heroes as possible. Here, it's just going to move towards the closest foe, and we're going to have to watch that because we don't want both of us getting hit for two damage. Let's go ahead and meet our two heroes. We have Deirdre for our first one. She has eight health on this side, and I believe eight health on her wounded side as well. Yes, she has eight health on both sides. So think of it like she has 16 health. She has three actions, Divine Strike, Graceful Step, which actually is a shenanigan. So she can move for not even an action, move four, which is awesome. And then of course the Invigorate, so catch your breath. With the cards we unlocked last scenario, we now have four hero cards instead of only two. And going forward for the rest of the campaign, we'll always choose four because we're actually going to unlock more and you'll get to choose which four to use. Right now, we just have to use the four that are available to us. We have I've Come to Help and Wing of Alana Labaste, my foes, which is cool. Now, these actually have charges on them. You haven't seen charges yet. How these work, whenever I use this card, I spend a charge. If that card has no charges, I can't use it anymore. But that means I could use I've Come to Help, which is a shenanigan. A leap three and you or a friend in range two gains a shield. I could use that three times in my first turn if I want it. But then all those charges are gone. 
This one here allows us to leap two, range two, attack with one yellow die and one auto damage to two foes, and you can push to each target. We also have Take Hope, We Shall Prevail. This is a burst attack, two yellow dice, and she can hit the three spaces that are in front of her. If she deals any damage, she can choose a friend or herself to gain a shield within range two. And this is the only one she actually uses a cooldown. Everything else has the charges instead. She can also do a mass heal. You may move one each friend and then you heal three, friends adjacent to heal two, and all other friends heal one. She ran downstairs just with a pot lid, so she has one shield from that. And then she has the Potion of Energy. This is one of the new cards that we unlocked. And this can be used as a shenanigan. It's a one-time use per scenario. You or an adjacent friend invigorate four, which means you can remove up to four of those cooldown tokens. Or recharge one, which would be helpful for her because three of her powers uses recharges. What's also really fun with this game, every time you play, you can choose any heroes in any campaign. You can change them up anytime you'd like. You also have this upgrade sheet. Okay, and each time you play a scenario, it will tell you how many ticks you can choose on this sheet and gain those tokens. So you can see these are the gold banner spots. In this scenario, I can only choose one spot. So I have to start in one of the two gold spots and start moving around and picking out pieces or um, upgrade tokens. The one I'm going to choose is the one power because we've got lots of ways to gain shields. I'm actually more worried about damage because we don't have any huge damage dealers here with these two. So I will have her start with one power token. I do love that every time you play, you can choose different spots on that power tree. It's really cool. All right, here we have Fiona. Fiona has nine health on this side and nine health on this one. So she has 18 health versus the 16 for Deidre. She has the power attack. Her basic attack is two yellow dice on one foe. And splash means if there's a foe or foes adjacent to that foe, all of them take one damage. She also can move fast, move five, and then she's got her invigorate one. Fiona has some really cool shenanigans. She has You Look Ready to Rumble. That lets her range four, just pull a foe three spaces towards it because she is melee. And then we have Why Hold Ground When You Can Take It. This one is a leap two. Now you're going to see up here in this left-hand corner, there are symbols for different tokens. If you choose these specific abilities when you play, you get those tokens as well. So we'll get a power token from this one. And this is a new token you haven't seen. It's called an Evade Token. What you can do with that one is discard this token after after taking damage from an attack. You avert the harm effect and you can actually leap to so that you can move out of the way. Really nice uh, and you start with that. Those are one-time uses of course. She also has, I don't wear all this armor just for defense. I love this. It's a shield bash. Look at that. Melee attack with two yellow dice and then if she deals a damage she can actually heal one. And then she has a fight, I'm in, move four, and then she can attack with two yellow dice on one foe. Finally, she has her icon of godliness, which gives her a shield, and she has the same potion of energy. She also has her power tree. It's really interesting how I use this power tree differently when playing with four characters versus only two. For her, I'm also going to go for another power because I do feel like I've got tons of ways to get shields. I'm going to need damage in this scenario. And I'm glad I just talked about the four player versus two player. I set up the board as if we had four heroes. I was thinking, oh my gosh, there's slimes everywhere. This is what it should look like. Three slimes and two gizmoblins. I had to put them in different places. Now, what's our objective? Our objective is to get through the under uh, under the cellar room. We need to knock down this gravel wall before all the slimes are removed from this room. If we don't do that, an event happens and you don't want the event to happen. We've filled out our initiative bag, having two of the partial turns for Fiona and Deidre, and then the two regular activations, as well as a gray and a blue token. Okay, so I'm going to put all of these in our bag, and I think we're ready. We've already rolled up our scheme dice. Oh, let me show you the round. We'd start, of course, invigorating all abilities, but we're good there. We've already rolled our scheme dice. We have filled the initiative bag. Now we draw and resolve. We do reveal when the gravel wall is removed. We reveal during the combat phase and do the reinforcements. After that, during the objective phase, we check for acid pool damage. So anyone standing in acid pool will take three damage for those acid pools. So they're no joke. That could really hurt. So we do not want to be on acid pools. If there are no slimes on the map, you have to check for these, this event, Trembling Tunnels. Then we check for the objectives and win condition. Right now, we 
just need to continue to progress through, and how we lose is one of the heroes are defeated. All right, let's start by drawing our first initiative token, and that will start our round. So we have Fiona, and that's her main activation. So that means two actions and one shenanigan. We'll start our turn with our shenanigan. Why hold ground when you can take it? We're going to leap two. The two Gizmoblins over here are likely going to attack this slime so long as I'm not closer to them. So I'm going to have Fiona actually move one with her leap moving here so she can attack these slimes. We'll just use our basic power attack here, rolling two yellow dice, attacking one foe, but then we can splash one damage on number seven. Don't forget, because we're playing on legendary mode, we do have the doom die as well. So let's roll these two up. We just dealt three damage and one damage to ourselves. We can take it. We've got nine health. So we'll take the one. That's three damage to number six and one damage to number seven because of the splash. And I actually think we're just going to do the same thing for action number two, which means now number seven has a uh, second damage. And number six, uh, no, we can't add anything because we didn't get the symbol. So we're going to roll. Oh, we only have two damage with that one. That will mean we have five damage to number six, two damage to number seven, and we have one of the epic dice symbols. So we'll grab an ep epic die and put it into our pool. After Fiona's activation, we'll draw our next token. Oh, the slimes are going to go. We'll start with the number three slime. He'll move just to here and stop his movement. If he was smart, he would want to move here because he could damage to all adjacent foes. But no, he's not smart. Not yet, at least. <laughs> We're only in scenario two. He's just going to stop right there and attack Fiona for two damage. Fiona does have a shield, though, and we can discard that token to block up to two damage for that one instance. If, let's say, he was dealing us one damage, we could use that shield and we couldn't carry over that block, though. So, we're good with number three. Number six, though, doesn't have to move, and we'll just simply attack Fiona. Fiona doesn't have anything to stop that, so she'll take two damage from that. She was going from one damage to three damage. And you ready for this? Number seven's going next. They can move through each other one well, we'll just have her move here, too, because she can move at either one. And remember, these traps are safe spaces for them. Seven's going to move there, attack for another two, and that's five total damage now for Fiona. Whew. Maybe I should have grabbed that other shield token. All right, well, let's see. Our next one to go, oh, the Gizmoblins. Okay, the Gizmoblins are going to go next. They're going to move to uh, two towards their closest foe. Well, this one's going to stay here, and this one's going to move up one. And what's great is they're going to attack these slimes for us. They will deal one damage to number seven and one damage to number three. Just so you can see all the damage, number seven has three, number three has one, and number six has five damage. Okay, let's see who's going to activate next. We have Fiona's partial activation next. Fiona could just do an attack and do a guaranteed takeout number six, but this just looks too juicy. If we attack number seven, we can splash damage on three and six. I just need to make sure that there's a slime around uh, when I destroy this wall. Otherwise, we're going to have bad things happen. So I am going to attack number seven. This means three and six take that one damage. I am going to add the epic die because maybe we can just kill this thing. It has three damage already. Let's see. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, plus the three is seven. That's just enough to kill number seven. The slime number seven is done. That is what I'm talking about, Fiona. <laughs> Next to go will be Deidre's uh, partial turn. Let's start with our wings of Alana. We're going to spend one charge. We're going to leap to attack range to one yellow and one auto damage to two foes. And we can push to each target. That leap two allows us to ignore difficult terrain, so we'll jump here, and then I think it's risky. One, two, we can hit both of these, the three and the six. We have one auto damage. Let's roll this up. That's our, hmm. You know what? I'm going to cancel this yellow. Let's not take the damage, because one damage is enough to kill number six. Number six will have seven damage. It'll be gone, and number three will just have one damage, and we can push it two away. We'll take six off the board. This number three could be pushed two. Let's push it two away over there. I like that. <laughs> now we should just have Deidre's main activation left in the bag. Yes, we do. Let's have her activate. We'll start with our shenanigan moving with a graceful step. We'll move ourselves one, two, three, right here next to the gravel wall. We're within range two of that Gizmoblin. Let's go ahead and attack it, and then we can push it one. We'll give our dice a roll, and we have two damage and the Doom Die. We'll take a damage for the Doom Die. We'll do two damage of the four health to number two. 
I was going to push him, but I'm realizing if I do, I push him out of range. So I actually think I'm going to leave him where he is for now. My second activation, because I've only done one shenanigan, one action, my second action, I'm going to attack him again. Maybe I can get lucky and just take him out here. No, I don't take him out. That's only one damage. A die in the epic pool, though, is great. He has three out of the four, and this time I can push him. We're now going to shove him next to the other Gizmoblin, so hopefully they can attack each other and destroy each other. <laughs> so now the goal is to open up this as soon as I can next turn, get some more enemies spawned over there So uh, before taking out this final slime. That ends our first round. I'll refill the bag. We'll invigorate and roll some scheme dice. Fiona is the only one that needs to cool down. We'll remove that. We'll roll our dice again. Oh, we've got the uh, ghost face. The slimes will roll another ghost face as well. We'll start drawing for our first activation, and we have blue, that's the Gizmoblins. Each of them are simply going to stay where they are. They would not move because they're adjacent to each other, each dealing each other one damage. Actually, one quick update to that, the number two Gizmoblin would be destroyed by the number one activating, so then the number two is gone and would not activate, so number one still has no damage. We'll then draw to see who goes next, and we have the slimes. That means this number three slime will move one two right next to uh, Fiona and will attack for two damage I forgot Fiona has one more shield she'll utilize the shield so she takes no damage and we avoid the harm which is placing out any sort of traps nice we've actually finished all of the negative activations next to go is Fiona just her partial activation I think we'll just use our on the move so getting to move five I'd love to just take out this slime, but if we do, then we potentially have to deal with an event. So I don't want to do that. One, two, three, four. We're going to stand right here. We'll then draw our next activation token, and we have Fiona taking her regular activation. This means it's time to knock down that wall. So we'll do our regular attack against that wall. We unfortunately have to roll the dice, and we have a burst. Uh, let's see. We'll roll this in. Okay, three damage. Let's go ahead and cancel one, two damage, so we don't take the damage from the Doom die, but all we needed was one to knock down those crumbling walls. As the wall of loose rock collapses, the room shudders, dislodging yet more sections of wall and the oozing monsters hiding behind them. We have two glitch moblins i should have said that instead of giz uh, gl giz moblins they're glitched moblins uh they're at b and c and then four slimes right here now what's nice is they've all already activated this round so i don't have to worry about them activating for our second activation a fight i'm totally in we're going to move four and attack with two yellow dice on one foe we will move one two three four right here and we can attack number five We'll add the epic die to this attack, so we will roll all of these dice. Come on, I want big hits. One, two, three, four. Only four damage to number five. I'll still take it. We'll then use our shenanigan at a range four. We can pull three, one foe. We'll pull this number two, one, two, so it's next to us. We know for sure Deidre is going next. We'll do her partial activation, followed by her full activation. We'll start with our shenanigan, I've come to hell, using one charge that will allow us to leap three. You or a friend in range, two gains a shield. We won't be able to give Fiona a shield, so we're going to give ourselves a shield because we might need to tank a little here. That leap three allows us to go one, two, three. We are right into the fray. Our first action then is take hope we shall prevail. This will place four cooldown tokens on here, but we can do an attack hitting everything within a front arc for two yellow dice. And if we cause a harm, any damage, you or a friend in range two gain a shield, we'll for sure do some harm. I'll gain the shield again because Fiona is not two away. We have a couple different arcs we can choose. We're going to choose this arc, one, two, three. So we're hitting the slime four and slime one. Let's see a big hit here, shall we? Some crits. No, no crits, but three damage and one epic die back into the pool. This means we've done our shenanigan for our partial activation, and then for our full activation, we've done one action, so I can do another action and another shenanigan. Let's try this one again. It allows us to leap to attack range to one yellow die plus an auto damage to two foes, and then we can push to each target. We'll leap ourselves one, two right here, attacking the same two, four, and one. We're going to add the epic die. We have one auto damage already. We've got two 
three, four. I could just make it three with the Doom Die. You know what? I'm going to take the damage with the Doom Die. So that means we just dealt four damage to one and four, which is actually just enough to take both of them down. That's what I'm talking about. Deidre with the move. Two slimes eliminated. Now remember, we need to leave a slime out. Otherwise, an event will happen before we take out these walls. But I've got that three slime way far away, and I still have two slimes here. These, I gotta say it right, glitched moblins <laughs> will be attacking each other likely. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. That is going to end the round. No one is sitting in acid pools, so we will start the next round by invigorating all of our abilities. We'll remove one time from all of these, and we get one here for Deidre. We'll roll for the glitched moblin first. So we've got this same thing moving two towards a foe. And then we have ooh, a new one. Move four towards a foe. Attack two damage to all foes for the slime. We can move to the combat phase, grabbing one of our initiative tokens. If I can grab it. Oh, we have Fiona's full activation. Fiona already has five damage. So let's do something about that, shall we? We will use this one using two yellow dice to attack number five. Number five has four damage on it. It only needs three more to be defeated. We're rolling two yellow dice. So long as we harm, which we should, we'll be able to heal one. We need three damage from this attack to take them out. Oh, we only have two, so that's not enough. I could use a power token. Is that worth it? I think it is. I'll use one of her two power tokens to increase that attack by one. That'll be enough to take out this number five slime. So now there's only a number two slime here and a three slime really far away. <laughs> that was only our first action. Oh, and don't forget we healed by one. So now we have four damage instead of five. Let's use our shenanigan for leaping two. And then we'll use our basic attack here. We'll move two into this acid pool. Now you'd think that'd be bad, but remember we still have a partial activation so I can use that to move out of there. Feel like it's worth it so we can still do an attack for two yellow dice. This slime has no damage on it right now. Now it has two. Gosh, I was looking for some epic dice, but we didn't get it. Okay, two damage. That will end Fiona's full activation. She will still have a partial activation at some point. Let's see what's going to activate next. We have Fiona's partial activation. I guess she's going to be running. She's going to run herself one, two, three right here. So next time she can break open the walls. I'm hoping these glitched moblins will take care of each other. There might be one slowly ambering towards us, but we'll be fine. The next character to activate will be the glitched moblins. None of the three glitched moblins will move. This one will deal one damage to number three, and then these ones will deal one damage to each other. For a quick update on health, the glitched moblin number one has no damage. Two and three have one. The slime that's far away from us has four damage out of the seven, and the one that's closer to us has two damage out of seven. Now we are going to draw our next one, and we have Deidre going her uh, partial activation. We're not in a huge rush. Let's start with gather around time for a mass heal, spending one of our three charges here. This says you may move one each friend. You heal three friends adjacent heal two. all other friends heal one. So we'll heal up. We actually only have two damage. Fiona, though, can be placed here and she'll heal two damage. That means she's down to only two damage instead of four. That felt like a pretty good partial turn. OK, next to go are the slimes. The first slime to activate will be this number two, simply moving four and attacking to all adjacent foes. But we do have this one shield from Deidre, so she'll take no damage. This number three slime, one, two, three, four, is just going to try and get closer to us. Last to activate then will be Deidre's activation, her full one. Why don't we start by opening up the dripping passage? So we'll do a basic attack. That's one yellow die. We'll roll that up. Oh, I need to take the damage. Otherwise, I don't do enough to break down the grappling wall or the gravel wall, I should say. So uh, DG will take one damage because of the doom die, but we did destroy the wall. A long, narrow chamber that is steeper and noticeably more humid opens before you. There's an ominous, loud sound echoing from further into the darkness that can only be described as sticky. We have here three more slimes, B, D, and E, that's where they're showing up, and two traps. So no glitched moblins, just slimes this time. And remember, the slimes are immune to those traps, so those traps really only bother us, not the enemies. For our second activation, we're just going to attack that slime that's right next to us, number two. It already has two damage, now it has four. 
for our shenanigan, we'll use I've Come to Help to leap three, and this time we'll be within range two of Fiona, so we can give Fiona one of those blessed shields. So we still have two shields, uh, Fiona will have one. Deidre will jump into the fray, one, two, three, landing right here. That will end this round, still no one in acid pools, well, except for this one, but that doesn't matter, they're immune to that, so we will invigorate and roll our dice. This means Fiona will get one of her shenanigans back, which is really nice, and we still have to wait two more time for Deidre's. We'll roll for the glitched Moblin first, so another move two, and we have, ooh, move four. We'll start that combat phase by drawing our first token. Fiona has her partial activation. I think we're just going to have Fiona catch her breath and invigorate one. We want this ability back for this turn, so I'm going to remove this time or cooldown marker so we can use this during her regular activation. That will let her run into the next room, that dripping passage, and deal two uh, yellow dice to an enemy. Seems cool. Okay, next to go are the glitched moblins. I gotta say, I love these glitched moblins. This one will move one, two, and he's within range three of that slime. Pinging it again, it now has five damage on it. Number two will then attack number three because it has to be the adjacent one. And then number three here will attack this slime. So that's the sixth damage. We just need one more and that slime will have been defeated purely by the glitched moblins. Here is a quick update on health. You can see that number three is almost done. Oh no, the slimes are going to go next. I was hoping that was not going to happen. Slime number one will activate moving one Two, and it's right next to Deidre, attacking her for two damage. Deidre still has two shields. Well, now she has one. She's blocking the two damage. Number two is going to come up right behind on Fiona. Fiona has one shield. She's going to block the two damage there. Number three is over here. One, two, it's going to hit Fiona. Fiona has no more shields. That will deal her two damage. She's back down to four damage. Number four will attack Deidre. She has a shield, so she's okay there, but that's her last shield. And number five is going to come into here and will deal two damage to Deidre. Deidre has nothing to stop that. I believe that puts her at uh, three damage. That was a bit brutal. Next to go will be at Deidre's partial activation. Deidre is set up too well for this action to not take advantage of it. So for her one activation right now, she will use her Invigorate, getting rid of one of the cooldown. We can do that again her next time she's activated and then use it. Uh, but Fiona is going to go first. Let's start with a fight I'm in, being able to move four and then attacking with two yellow dice. The two yellow dice might be a bit of an overkill because we're going to move here and we are going to be the ones who takes down the number three slime. We only need one damage here, so we'll go ahead and cancel this one with the Doom Die. We have no epic dice, thank goodness, so I'm going to gain one epic die with this. One damage is enough to take out that number three slime. That's our first action. For our shenanigan, let's pull a foe that's in range four. We will pull number two, one, two. It can't get any closer, so it will stay right there. We'll then use our melee attack here, attacking with two yellow dice. And we will be able to splash onto number four. That's his first damage. The number two slime already has four damage on it. I just need three here to take him out. Oh, we only have two. That's not enough. Do I want to use a power token? I have it. Let's use it. We'll use our power token to deal three damage. I don't get an epic die. I decided not to use that one, hoping I'd roll it maybe twice. That's okay. Number two, slime is toast. You can see it's kind of important to keep those slimes under control because we don't want to take too much damage. There's only one activation left, and that's Deidre. She's going to have some fun. Action one, let's invigorate. Action two, we're going to use this. This can hit all three of the slimes. Only one of them has a damage. And then we can, within range two, give someone a shield. We'll give Fiona a shield back. We most certainly are epic dying this one up. So we've got two yellows, a black, and of course the doom die. Two, three, four damage to all of them. That means five damage to four, and then four damage to the other two. We have a shenanigan left. We're going to use our last use of I've Come to Help to actually jump away, but you'll see why. We will be within range two of Fiona, so I'm going to give her a shield right now. The last thing I want to do is accidentally defeat all of these slimes before opening the next wall. So I am going to jump here. That way we'll be able to open this wall hopefully next turn. Fiona can uh, gain the shield because she's within range too. And maybe take out a couple of these slimes. Especially because number four only has two health. 
The only sad part about this is the glitched moblins aren't being very useful anymore. They're just going to start defeating each other. And then finally, one of them will probably limp over here. That's going to end the round. Wow, this goes fast. We'll invigorate all abilities and roll our scheme dice. This will give Fiona her leap two ability, which will be really nice. And then one off of take hope we shall prevail. Rolling up our scheme dice, we have moving two and attacking range three again. And we have, oops, I rolled this one and switched it. Move four towards a foe, attack all adjacent foes. Okay, I'll put all of our initiative tokens back into our bag. Let's see who's going to activate first. Don't be terrible, don't be terrible. Okay, it's Deidre's partial activation. We're just going to do our basic attack on the number one slime, which has four damage. Rolling a yellow and the doom die, we have two damage. That would put it at six. I do think I'm going to use my power token to make that seven. Take out that number one, so we don't have to deal with that damage. Uh, but we will have to deal with the doom die, so that is, I think, her fourth damage. So we're halfway down to being wounded. Our next initiative draw will be Deidre's main activation. Oh, I did not want to break the wall. I don't think I'm going to break the wall yet. This seems a bit of a waste, but I'm not sure what else I want to do. I'm going to move four with our shenanigan. We're going to move here for four. Golly. Our first action, then, we will use this. You may move one, one of our friends, and then we can heal three ourselves. So we're down to one damage. And we have Fiona next to us. We'll keep her next to us so she can heal two. That means she only has two damage. So two damage and one damage. The healing is pretty awesome in this scenario. We'll sneak Fiona over here. And then for our second activation, let's just take a pot shot at number four. We'll give our dice a roll. Uh, I'm going to deal with the doom. We'll take the one damage to be able to deal one damage to number four. It's at six, but the big thing is get an epic die back into the pool. I like that. That seems worth it. The thing I don't like about this is Deidre is really far away from this wall now. Ugh. Oh, well. It is what it is. You got to do what you got to do. So our next activation are the slimes. Oh, no. That was the other thing I didn't take into account because number four is going to activate first. It's going to deal damage, uh, two damage to both of them because they're both adjacent. No, why'd I do that? Okay, they'll each take two. And then this number five will deal two damage to Fiona. Fiona has two shields, so we'll take that. She takes no damage at all. Unfortunately, Deidre has nothing, so she'll take two more damage. She's back to four damage total. Uh, but now we can open up that wall and the slimes won't activate. Uh, the Gizmoblins will activate first. Number one will activate first, moving one, two, and will attack number two for one damage. So number two now has two damage on it. Number two will attack, and we'll have it attack number one. So number one has one damage, number two has two damage, and number three has two damage. Number three has to attack number two, because that's the one that's adjacent. So number three has two damage. Number three is almost destroyed. That means we know Fiona is activating next. We'll do her main activation, followed by her partial activation. Her main activation, we're just going to do the melee attack on number four, and that will splash one damage to number five. So number five now has five damage on it. Rolling two dice for this attack. Oh, we've got a burst. Uh, we need to cancel one of these. Let's cancel the burst, because who cares? We have the one damage we need. That will take out number four. For our shenanigan, let's do a leap two. We'll leap over this trap and we'll be right next to this wall. So for our second activation, we'll break down the wall. Two yellows and a red, we'll roll those up. Let's cancel this one. That's more than enough damage, breaking down that gravel. Upon revealing the room, you encounter a very unwelcome sight, a truly massive slime monster with smaller ones budding off it. The monster jiggles to life upon your entrance and dust and gravel rain down from above. The ceiling appears to be barely supported by the rotting pillars around them. So we have slimes in E, F, and G, three slimes, a gelatinous blob at H, and one two damage trap at I. Now things change a little bit. There's an escape during the objective phase. If this gelatinous blob, which is right here, ever gets past this line, you can see there's this green dotted line here, the players lose the game. If the gelatinous blob crosses this line but is moved back before the objective phase, we don't lose. There are three rotting pillars. One, two, and three. Three of them. Each of them have three health. We can actually attack those. Every time we destroy a rotting pillar, we will deal on legendary mode five damage to the gelatinous blob. 
This even goes through the toughness tokens, which I'll show you what that is in a second. Our objective here is simple, defeat the gelatinous blob. If ever a hero is defeated, or during the objective phase, this gelatinous blob is past this line, then we lose the game. The gelatinous blob has two toughness tokens. What toughness tokens do, I think they're kind of cool. The next two instances of damage do nothing to the gelatinous blob. You just discard the toughness token. After you get rid of those though, then it has 30 health. Oh my gosh. We also have this yellow initiative token. I'm going to throw that into the bag. We can see it's immune to acid and immune to traps, just like the slime. And we also have a new keyword, massive. When a push-pull effect targets this figure, that effect is reduced to push or pull one. So no matter what, we can only push or pull them one. When a force movement effect causes this figure to move X, reduce it to one, this figure is not affected by grab or place effects. So you can't grab it, you can't place it somewhere. The only thing we can do is push and shove it, but it's gonna take one, uh, or no matter how much we could normally push or pull it, it'll only be a max of one. Let's roll our die up for it. We have the ghost face. Push one each adjacent figure, that's even friendly ones. It's going to move one towards the dripping passage and then attack three damage to all foes adjacent to it. Now I'm realizing something. I had Fiona do her full activation, two actions and a shenanigan. I'm going to put this partial activation back into our bag because we wouldn't have drawn that yet. And now we have a yellow one to potentially contend with. So let's draw our next one. Well, it is Fiona's partial activation first. That was kind of a bummer. I was hoping the blob would go first, so I think I'm just going to do an invigorate, removing one cooldown token on a fight. I'm in, so we can do a move for an attack next time. Now we know the gelatinous blob is going. First, it has push one each adjacent figure. That's the only adjacent figure, and then it will move one space towards the dripping passage. We have now completed the round. Let's start our next round, invigorating all of our abilities and rolling our scheme dice. Fiona is going to be essentially ready to rock, except for the leap two, which I'm okay with. And we'll remove one here from Deidre. Our poor Gizmoblins will activate just by dealing damage to each other. Our slimes will be activating moving four. And for the gelatinous blob, we will have this one activate the gurgle sploosh. Push one each adjacent figure, move one towards the dripping passage, attack three, one foe. If harm, place a three damage trap in an unoccupied space nearest that enemy. Okay. We're getting there. All we have to do is defeat the gelatinous blob. We can ignore the slimes, although I'm not sure if we'll last if we do that. Uh, first to go will be our glitch moblins. One will activate first, taking out number two, dealing the fourth damage. Three will then activate next. We'll move one over here and deal one damage to number two. So one and three each have two health remaining. Now we'll draw to see who activates next. We have Fiona doing her main activation. Let's start with our move four and then attack a foe. We're going to move one, two, three, four. I know we're in slime. Hopefully we'll take care of that in a little bit, but we are going to attack this rotten pillar with two yellow dice. It seems a bit of a waste, but we're going to use the epic die to guarantee we take it out. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, if we had not rolled that, we would have only dealt two damage. The rotten pillar wouldn't be gone. This way, it's done. Three damage to the pillar. That three damage to the pillar is a straight five damage to the gelatinous blob, and it does go through the toughness tokens. For our shenanigan, we are going to use two cooldown tokens, range four, pull three, a foe. That three will be reduced to one, so we'll pull the gelatinous blob one space closer. One, two, three, now it's only two away, so that works. We're then going to use our basic melee attack, attacking slime number three. What's awesome about Fiona, and it's hard to tell, three is here, five is here, and two is here. Well, look at this, two and five are in adjacent spaces, so we can splash one damage to each of them. Two will take one. Five, instead of taking a damage though, that splash of one removes one toughness token. I like it. Two yellow dice for this attack. And we have, ooh, an epic die going back into the epic pool and two damage. So two damage to number three. That was a pretty awesome turn for Fiona. Let's see who's going to activate next. Oh, we have the slimes activating next. This is going to hurt Fiona quite a bit. One, two, three, four. They can move through each other. So that slime deals two damage. That's four to Fiona. Now Fiona's going to use her dodge. That does not block any of the damage, but it lets her do a leap 
two, she is going to leap herself over to here. That means the number two slime will go one, two to be here, and that's going to be another two damage. So that means six total damage to Fiona. The third slime is then going to look around, cannot get to Fiona. So it's going to start running towards Deidre. It can move a total of four spaces, one, two, three, four, and remember it ignores traps. And then the number five one will simply move here, dealing two damage to Deidre. Deidre already has four, so that'll put her at six. So we're both at six damage. We're starting to feel a little bit of the pressure. I like it. Okay, Fiona's partial activation is next. Fiona is adjacent to that rotten pillar, but it's not going to help us to take it out now. It's going to help us more to take out some of these slimes. So I do think I'm going to attack the number one, no, number two slime because it has one damage on it. And we'll do that with two yellow dice and we get to heal one. That will put us down to five damage. As much as I don't love using an epic die for this, we're going to use it. We've got an epic die and two yellow dice rolling them up. It'd be nice to get a crit sometime. Three, four, five damage. Five plus the one, that's six. Oh, we almost took it out. Our next activation will be Deidre's main activation. Let's use our last charge for Wings of Alana. This will allow us to leap to, range to, attack with one yellow die, one auto hit on two foes, and we can push each target two. We'll leap to over this number five slime and then attack both of these two. We have one auto hit. That will be a second one. We'll take the damage. Yeah. You know what? If we take too much damage, we'll flip over. We still have eight health. So that's seven out of our eight. But we do get an epic die into our pool. And we dealt a total of two damage to each. That will actually kill number five. And number three has four damage on it. Five is gone. And three can get shoved two more over here. We'll then use our shenanigan to move four, one, two, three, four, and we're now within range two of the gelatinous blob. Let's attack it. We're going to do our basic attack, which won't deal any damage to it because it has a toughness token. However, we, sh we still should be able to push him one because that's not a harm effect. If that was a harm effect, the harm effect would not go off because we're not going to harm the gelatinous blob. We'll roll our dice. We have one hit. That's all we need to get rid of that toughness token. The gelatinous blob has no more toughness tokens. And we can push that blob one more space over here. We only have two more activation tokens in here. Oh, yellow is next. So the first thing, the gelatinous blob, will push each adjacent character. So this one will get shoved over here. Then it's going to move one this way. Then it does an attack for three damage on one foe. And you know who it's going to hit. One, two, it's going to hit Deidre. Deidre is going to be wounded. Because of that, we'll also place a three damage trap in a hex adjacent to her, closest to her. So we'll place it here and place three damage. And remember, these traps we cannot use against these enemies. So it's just getting in our way. Deidre only had one health left, but she took three damage. The damage does not carry over, though. We'll just remove it. She'll be back at eight health. However, this trigger happens. You become wounded. You gain four shields. You may give some or all these tokens away to friends. I'm going to give two to Fiona and keep two for myself. So we'll each have two. I do love how a lot of the different characters have a reaction when they flip to their wounded side. She's pissed. <laughs> okay, last to go. We should know who it is. It'll be Deidre's partial activation. But you can see her action has now changed. She has Divine Strike. Range two, attack one foe, and she has limp along. It takes an action to move three. I'd really love to get adjacent to this rotten pillar, but I have to move three. I don't get to leap. And if I step in this trap, yeah, then I take the damage. And I only have eight health remaining. So I do think I'm just going to move one, two, three. We're adjacent to this one. Hopefully next time we can get over to here. The big thing is she likes to push targets and now she's on the wrong side of that gelatinous blob, but it is what it is. I had to do it so that she doesn't take the damage. Okay, that's going to end the round. We're not done. We have to take out that gelatinous blob. Let's invigorate our abilities and roll some scheme dice. Fiona will have her leap two back available to her. And uh, for Deidre, she has only one cooldown left on her take hope. We shall prevail. We'll roll for all three of our schemers. Okay, this one we always get the move to. Uh, this one we have move four, attack foes all adjacent. And this one is pushing one and dealing three damage to one foe. Ooh, 
we can grab our initiative tokens. Let's see who's first. We have Deidre and she is pissed. Deidre will start with her shenanigan. She is going to recharge one, which means she can place one of these recharge tokens on one of her power cards. We're going to place that here and then immediately use it for her first action. Leap to range to attack one yellow die plus one auto and then push to, uh, to each target. We've got to keep this blob at bay, so we are going to jump two to here we're within range two of number two which has six damage and we can still attack this one so long as we deal a damage we can shove this one back two should be gone we are dealing one auto damage so we're going to grab that epic die and use it and we've got three four plus one is five damage to each of them well number two is definitely gone the gelatinous blob will be pushed back one number two is gone the gelatinous blob now has 10 damage out of 30. That means we only need to deal 20 more damage. Our second action then will be our basic attack, attacking this blob or slime, whatever you want to call it. We can still push the target, which I like. Okay, we'll take the damage. That's only one, but seven health from losing the game. We will get an epic die. That's the whole reason why I took that. I want that epic die for sure. We'll push the target one space here, so it's right next to Fiona, and it is two spaces away now instead of one, so that works for us. That was our main activation. That was a good turn. The number one slime only has one damage on it, just so you know. Okay, blue is activating next. That's the Gizmoblins or the Glitch Moblins. I really wish I could get number three to attack this slime, but I can't. They just attack each other, each taking one damage. They will likely kill each other next turn. Our next activation will then be Fiona's main activation. We're going to attack that rotten pillar and we're going to splash one damage onto that number one slime. So it has two damage, but we'll do two yellow dice and we'll do the epic die. We just need three damage here. Oh, there's a burst. Okay, I am going to cancel this one so I don't take the damage, but I got double burst. So I'll just roll these two in definitely enough to take out that pillar. Three damage to the pillar and five more to the gelatinous blob. It's at 15. It's at half health. Shenanigan time? I think so. Let's do a leap two. Just so you can see easier, I will remove the gelatinous blob for a second. We're going to leap one two. So we're right behind that gelatinous blob. For our second activation, I think we'll move five. One, two, three coming over here. Actually, for Jason, we're going to get shoved anyways. So we'll move here for four. I'm hoping to take this out during my partial activation. That'll get it to a 20 for 20 damage. Then we just need to deal 10 to this guy and we win. I love taking out bosses. It's so much fun. Okay, Deidre has her partial activation next. She is within range two of this guy. So why don't we do the divine strike? It will shove him back one so long as we hit him. Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do the divine strike on him. One yellow die. Well, roll our dice up. Oh, we get an epic die and one damage. That'll put him to 16 damage. Our next activation will be we have yellow. Oh, I almost forgot to shove him back one. There we go. Now he's going to activate first. All figures get pushed one away. There aren't any. He's going to move one space forward. He will attack one foe within range three. So it could be either, but Fiona is closer. So it will be Fiona taking three damage. We will use two shields that blocks four. So we're wasting one, but that way no trap is placed out because we took no damage. And that'll be the end of the activation of the gelatinous blob. We're doing pretty good. Uh, next to go are the regular blobs. This one is going to hurt a little bit. Regular blob moving here, attacking for two damage. DG does have a shield to block that. This one though, one, two, three, four. Can you believe it can get there? We fortunately have another shield token. Next time though, that could be a problem. <laughs> okay, I think we have one left. It should be Fiona. We'll do our basic attack using two yellow, a red, and then we'll use that epic die attacking the rotten pillar and we can cancel out one of these and that will still deal three damage taking out the pillar dealing five more damage to the gelatinous blob it's at 21 nine more health and we have won the scenario we'll then do our cooldowns for the next round and it looks like we have our shenanigan to pull which is great the gizmoblins will activate once again attacking each other uh this one oh we have a potential trap showing up and for this one, ooh, we have dealing three damage to all adjacent foes. We'll draw our first activation. Deidre will be first. 
It's only a partial activation and this isn't that great, but this should hopefully help her because she can get a shield. So she's going to spend four time grabbing a shield because she will definitely harm someone. Uh, she's using two yellow dice attacking just the blob number three. Deidre will roll two yellow dice, adding that red die. Of course, there's a burst. And yeah, three. Three damage. That's enough to take out number three. That was super sweet. Let's see who's going to activate next. Oh, the Gizmoblins. Number one is just going to take out number three. So number three doesn't activate. And that's all we're doing. Our next activation token will be Fiona's main activation. This is a little risky. We're actually going to pull it towards us. Still think it's worth it. We're going to pull it towards us. And then we are going to attack it with our basic attack twice. We only need to deal it nine damage to win this scenario. Let's roll these up. That's two. So now it's seven damage. <laughs> And then our second activation will do the same thing. Come on, I need some burst here, some burst. Okay, there's a burst. We'll definitely take the damage. That will be our sixth damage so that we can roll that burst in. Ooh, and we get an epic die. This will mean we're dealing one, two, three more damage plus the three. That's 26 damage, only four more health to go. We'll draw our next activation token and Deidre's regular activation. We'll do our move three for our first action. And then our second one, we will attack for our one yellow die. One yellow plus a red plus a black. Come on two, three more damage. That means we are one away. We'll definitely take the one damage for that. It's our second damage, but now it's at 29 damage. Our next activation will be Fiona's partial activation. That should be good because we can just do our regular activation here. Two yellow dice and one red, two damage. We only needed one. Oh, just took it out. The great slime beast is dead, felled at last by your swords and sorcery and maybe a few tons of stone. Once it releases its final squelch, it doesn't take much effort to search the rest of the cavern and clear out all of its remaining spawn. You and your companions are pleased with your victory, but are also very, very interested in getting back to the Red Dragon Inn for a scalding hot bath and a change of clothes. I don't know about you, says Deidre, picking at her slime-covered robes, but I have half a mind to burn these. Zot, on the other hand, seems not to notice Deidre's complaints or the sorry state of his own robes. He stands both deep in thought and deep in a puddle of congealing slime innards, stroking his gray beard with his hand and staring up at the spot where until recently the giant slime monster had been. Pookie, who has climbed up on top of Zot's silver skull cap, sniffs at the air, an irritated expression on his bunny face. Zot, you're both familiar with the Undercity, he says to Fiona and Gurki at last. Get a lot of slime down here, do you? Sure, some, says Gurky. Usually in the dark crawl spaces and abandoned parts, adds Fiona. They chew on cobwebs and dead things. You know, filth and stuff. Hmm, mumbles the wizard, clearly not put at ease by these replies. Don't worry, Zot, says Fiona, sheathing her sword. They're just monsters, right? We've beaten monsters before and we'll beat them again. We're kind of really good at this. Maybe. Zot turns and wades out of the puddle of slime guts with as much dignity as he can muster. I will leave you all to your baths and fresh linens, my friend. I, for one, need to pay a visit to the Collegium. I have a bad feeling that there's more going on here than we might think. You mean it's not a one-off, completely random slime infestation? Asks Kirky. That's just great. We can now unlock those vault items 22 through 25, and scenario 2 is done. Oh, wasn't it fun seeing how different these heroes are than Gog and Zot? I love it, and I've got two more I for sure want to show you all. Now, let me know if you'd like to see a series on this. I'm kind of thinking of going through, I don't know if it's all 25, <laughs> but I'd like to do a bunch because this game is fun. I want more people to see it. Plus, I just find the way the cards work and the manipulation of the enemy enemies with the pushes and pulls and how easy it is to activate makes me really enjoy this one. So far you've seen scenarios where you just have to take out a boss or whatnot but there's other ones where you have to free prisoners or you have to capture someone as you're going. There's lots of cool different scenario designs which I think is awesome. I'm hoping at some point they come out with an expansion for this with more heroes uh, because the six they have here are phenomenal. I want to see more. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for watching. A huge shout out to our patrons. Thank you for supporting us. Without you, it would be a lot harder for us to do this. If you're excited to see what comes next, then I need you to meet me at the table. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.